Hi guys, so welcome back to the channel. Um, today I thought I'd just look at a little program that I've been using for a couple of months now. Most people um, who are doing astrophotography know that, that it's a pretty essential program these days. Um, I started using this about two to three months ago. And yeah, once you start using it, you pretty much realize you can't go back because it enables you to separate the stars out from your astrophotography um, nebula and then work on the basically the main image, the, the, the nebulosity of your image um, separately, and then um, combine, combine the two in the end. Um, so it really is indispensable. So what I wanted to do is just do a very straightforward sort of how do you use this from um, downloading it to the final result and just a very quick step by step. So I'm not going to go into like su super amounts of detail. It's not about editing images particularly. It's just about how to use the program. First off, you need to download it from SourceForge. Um, as you can see, you can just download it here. Once you've downloaded it, you can extract it to a folder and you'll see basically there's a couple of executable files here. Um, and this is what's going to basically run to, this is going to run the algorithm across your um, images to extract the stars. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to go to an image in Photoshop. Now, this was the Triffid Nebula that I took a couple of months back. Um, and all I've done in this case is I've opened up the stacked image, which looked pretty much like this. And I've gone through a few steps here just to stretch the image initially, color balance the image and stretch it in Photoshop. You don't want to overstretch it at this point because you're trying to extract these stars. So what you don't want to do is, is end up with a really um, sort of blown out image where basically when the algorithm is running or when Starnet's running, it's going to end up extracting or pulling out too much information around these stars because you'll see when you try to integrate the two, it will then look a little bit weird. Um, so what you want to do is kind of put a moderate stretch on it um, like this, keep your dark, your black levels under control and now we're ready to separate the two. Okay, at this stage, this is my final image that I'm ready to take the stars out of. I don't want all these layers, so I'm quickly just going to um, copy that, and I'm going to put it into a new file quickly, like that. Um, don't need that background. And I'm just going to go File, Save As, and we are going to save this into that directory where we've got our star net. Um, executable file. You can save it somewhere else, but it just keeps it easy. Um, so I'm just going to call it, call this file stars. Okay. I'm going to go, okay. It's good to know it does need to be a 16 bit TIFF file for Starnet to, to run. So what I can do now is I'm going to go into here, and as you can see, there's our TIFF file that we've just saved. So we want to run this um, executable file and as you can see here in the same way that there's a mono and an RGB there's also a mono and an RGB um, batch file here which actually is going to run the exe for you. So all we're going to do is we're going to open up that file because we're using a one shot color image and as you can see, this is already in the file, and all I've done is I've said I want it to use the file named stars.tiff, which is this file, and I want to output it as a file named starless.tiff. So they're the only two changes that I've made. You could really call those whatever you want, but to me, that's what I'm going to use. Okay, so all I'm now going to do is I will run this, and we'll let this go. It doesn't take very long but I'm not going to make you sit here for that. So I'll come back in a second. Okay, so we're at the end of the process and you'll just get this message saying press any key to continue and that's finished. So if we go back now and open up, we'll see we've got this new file that we specified when we modified our back file here. 
Um, and if we just have a quick look at that, we can see now we've got this uh, starless version. So we've got something now that we can work on separately from our stars. So if we go back to Photoshop now, we can open that file, which is our starless version. And as you can see now, we've got these two versions. Now, ultimately, I'm going to want to work on this file now and, you know, change my colors and in improve contrast, etc. But at the end, I'm going to want to put those stars back in. So in Photoshop, one of the easiest ways to do this is we can just subtract one image from the other. So what we can do is we can actually go back to our image here and we can actually say, what we'll do first is we'll just make a copy of that layer just in case. And then what we can do is we can just say um, image, apply image, um, starless, and we'll change the blending to subtract. Okay, we can leave all these as is and say okay. So now as you can see, we've got this starless, uh, the stars, sorry. <laughs> confused between which one I'm talking about. Probably should have re renamed this file differently in the first place, but you get the point. So what I'm going to do now is I want these two together. So I have my starless image here. So I'm just going to pick up that layer and copy it. And I'm going to paste it into here. Okay. Now we've got our two layers. So what we can do now is we can actually change the blending mode on this layer and we can change it to screen and as you can see you get this nice combo of the two images I think there is another you can um, try different ones of these but I find generally screen works the best there is other versions of it okay so I have my two images now um, and I can work on my background independently now let's go to the version of this where I've actually modified the um, nebula and worked on it. Okay guys, so this is the image that I worked on. So I did various steps to um, enhance the background and try and enhance the colors and the contrast in the Triffid Nebula here. Um, and then what I did is obviously I put the stars back in. Now this is the way the stars looked originally. Um, which is sort of, for me at least, overpowering the image a bit. And this is the what I reduced the stars to. So I basically just used curves to make them a little bit sort of reduced in size. And I'll just show you how to do that. So this the, these were the stars that I originally put in. And all I'm going to do, I usually like to keep a copy of the original um, stars. So I'm just going to put that back in there. And all you're going to do is pick this layer here with your stars in them. And you're going to go to Image, Adjustments, Curves. And if we just have a look now at our background, all you're going to do is pull this back from the midpoint. And I'll just pull it back a long way so we can sort of see in an exaggerated way how small the stars are going to look. There you go. So basically, you know, pull it to whatever point you feel you'd like it to look. Um, obviously, you know, you can, you know, if you go so far, you may as well just keep it as a starless image, but it's a really nice way and a simple way of just enhancing your nebula and um, not allowing the stars to overpower your image. And that is pretty much it. So I hope that has helped some of you guys out there who are just starting to use Starnet um, and explain the steps that you can go through using a program similar to Photoshop and a one-shot colour camera to enhance your images. So thanks very much, and um, hopefully I'll be out myself soon, being able to take some um, images once this weather clears up. So thanks a lot, and I will see you later.